that hole in the bottom has moved in and this spring is barreled outwards. This whole spring is leaning out on the top right now. We've got a quick episode here on our street stock build, mounting the jack nut for the front here, for the front springs. Now I did this, and I've got an episode on this on our previous crush that we did a couple of years ago. But I got a lot of feedback on that, and some good information. And it works good, but we can definitely do better. So let's do this together. I wanna to show y'all an optimal way to get a jack nut in the perfect spot. We're gonna get it right this time. I've learned something building these race cars and I've gotten some good feedback and something that's really critical I wanted to share with y'all. Order of events of which thing you do next, there's a couple places where it's really important one of the places is these jack nuts and where you put them when you're going to start doing your own upper control arm mounts and stuff. This nut in its location needs to go in before you do the tower because this needs to be in its optimal spot, not you compensating or working around where you put your tower because you've got options for how your upper control arm is gonna mount, the length of it, the way you're gonna make that work and trim and stuff. But this right here, this needs to be in the right spot for the spring and it's just this piece. So it's not a whole lot of options about how you could modify this to work somewhere else, like with your upper control arm assembly. For that reason, we need to do this before we can move on to the fun stuff, getting all of this geometry and roll center stuff figured out. We're gonna do this right side together. It's gonna be quick, it's gonna be easy, and it's gonna be fast. Start your clock, this is gonna go quick. I've got this car up on a jig, um, but it doesn't matter. You can do this sitting on jack stands on the floor or something. The height of the car doesn't matter. Like I'm gonna use a piece of tubing just so I can work with a jack on the floor. Same difference as a car sitting a lot lower with the car just like directly using the jack. So I'm going to sit this right here and I've got this up and I'm gonna use a spring. I've got a hyper pull 550 here. I'm gonna use a soft spring that way I can jack it up. It's not like really pushing hard against the frame. So I've got a 550 here. Now I'm not using hypercoils this year. Mr. Me and Mr. J. Neal at BSB, BSB. Uh, but anyway, but me and Mr. J. Neal has already been talking. I'm definitely gonna buy some front new fresh springs. He's gonna work with me. We are definitely going up on rate on this car. He's got some really good ideas on how that we can make the new car I'm building a lot more competitive. You wanna definitely stick around for that because somewhere around March we'll be to that level of this build with the new shocks, the new springs, and all of that. But anyway, back to this. Right, we're on time, we're on the clock, we're on the clock. All right, so I've got a 550 here. I am going to set that in. There's a method to my madness. Okay, so now it's sitting in the cradle. I'm gonna bring it up a little bit. Now on my previous build, I set it level and I mounted the jack nut with it setting level. Now when I talk about level, when we talk about leveling the lower control arm, we're talking about the center of the pivot where the bolts go through it compared to the center of the ball. When those two are at the same height, that is a level lower control arm. That's kind of like a baseline starting point for ride height on the front of a car. It's a good place to start with on a car. And like with me on these cars, like I'm setting the left side level and then I'm dropping the right side, a quarter inch, a half inch, that kind of a deal is how like I set my ride heights. Well, I know that I'm always going to be in compression where the, this lower control arm is up more than level, okay? So like at all times. So when I did my crush and I set the spring and the location based on level, that wasn't actually correct because that means that I was in some form of a twist at all times in the actual compressed zone that the spring was working in. So that was a mistake I made. It wasn't terrible, it was fairly close and the spring compensated and bowed for it, but it does affect rate. We can do better. So, how are we gonna do that? Well, I'm gonna hit tape measure. The numbers that I'm getting here, remember, I'm up on a jig, it doesn't matter. All I'm after is like, I'm gonna look, and I know that I'm level on these bolts front to back, but like that bolt center is 37 and three quarters of an inch is where those bolts go through, 37 and three quarters inch. 
Uh, really easy on these Chryslers because this sleeve right here, the center of the ball is the center of the sleeve. So that's really simple. So I put a, I put a mark on the center and I'm just going to take and like I'm going to set it to 37 three quarters to start with. So I'm going to get this tube right, right in the middle. Hopefully this tube's not going to jump off. So I'm going to put some pressure on this y'all. That tube right in the middle. Don't you jump. Okay. So I'm going to take and like right there. All right. So. Okay. There's 37 three quarters. Come here, take measure. Get you out here and watch you. Right, quit fighting me. All right. So now, right now, that's level. And I can take, let me get this spring just sitting right perfect in this cradle. There it goes. All right. I'm going to get it centered. Okay. Now it's centered. I'm going to take, and just so we can reference. So now, right now, it's sitting flush in the bottom. It's centered, centered in it. I'm going to take and go across this spring here. And it is four and a quarter inches across the inside. I'll tell you what easier way to do it. Yeah, four and a quarter inches across the inside right there. So half of four and a quarter would be two and an eighth. So right now, the center of this spring is right there. And I'll do the same thing this way. All right. All right. So right now, if I was to put a jack nut in, it would actually split this edge. And if you've watched our build on our crush, if you recall, my jack nuts were actually out like this. Okay. So that's where it would at. So I would cut a hole. I put that jack nut in right there, right on that edge. That's not where it needs to be. Here's why because I'm always going to have this lower control arm up from that quite a bit as well. Uh, I'm going to run stiffer springs and I'm going to keep the front end sitting in an attitude at all times on the track. Now, I'm not going to pull this thing down three inches. I'm not going to be running like a three inch compressed ride height. I'm going to be running more like in that between one and three inches. Maybe it's in the two, somewhere in there. I don't have to be perfect, but I do need to have it pulled into that range. And for that reason, I'm going to take, and here's what I'm fixing to do. I'm fixing to take, and where the shock would mount, I'm fixing to make a mark, and I'm fixing to put two inches of compression right here from ride height. Why am I going two inches? I suspect I'm probably going to pull a half inch of this static ride height and when I'm running the car at attitude, navigating through the corner, compressing and stuff, that that half inch is going to turn into two inches. In other words, I'm going to pull it down maybe another inch and a half. I might go to two or two and a half as I go through bumps or right in that peak of that turn entry with the most pressure. But on average, I believe that two inches compressed from level is a good point to represent where that spring is going to most commonly be working. So I want to set the jack nut to be exactly centered in that spot. So let's do that. So I'm going to take and I'm going to make a mark and right there it's 37 and three quarters right there. So I'm going to jack it up until I get 39 and three quarters if it doesn't jump in my face. Cause I mean, I got it balanced on a pole, so y'all know how that goes. Let's see where we're at there. There's 39 and a quarter. Please act right for me. All right, where is that? Oh, I'm almost there, 39 and a half, come on. You can do it, you can do it. All right, 39 and three quarters. All right, there it is. So I just pushed it up two inches. 
at approximately where the shock is actually going to come up. Because when we talk about, you know, compression stuff, that's where we're actually measuring it. Now, here's the thing that's going to blow your mind, y'all. And I've already done this once, so I know what it's going to do. Got a hammer here. Right now, how do I show this? Come here, I'm going to show you something. So right now, this spring, and I don't know how well you can see it, but that hole, that hole in the bottom has moved in, and this spring is barreled outwards. This whole spring is leaning out on the top right now. So it is twisted over and out. So think about that. If I had this car in load, and say I compressed that spring down another two inches, it's still gonna be over that far, but it, that twist is exaggerated even more. So like, and this is not the, the jack plate that I'm gonna use. I'm gonna use one like, I think with a bearing, it's gonna maybe be the cup style. I gotta I got call Mr. J with BSB and talk about which one would be the best right here. But whichever one I use, it would actually start wanting to twist and we would see this thing cup right here because of that. And so like when you get down to say three inches, when you hit a bump or something, it's really gonna bow up. Well, what's that rate? Who knows? It's definitely not what it's, the spring's normally rated for, that's for sure. All right, enough talk. Are you ready to see it? Watch this. Look at that. So the first time I saw the spring do that, that was very eye-opening for me. It's moved, and it's moved a lot. And so like, all right. So I was kind of just letting it kind of vibrate and get where it wanted to be. In the bottom, I'm still sitting in the center. Let's see how much it moved there. Okay, so here's my two X's. This jack bolt moved an inch and a half. And buddy, that's a lot. I mean, that's a lot. Cause you think about it, that's on a spring, that nine inch spring's gonna be running, you know, seven inches, six inches, you know, down in there. That much, that's a lot of twist on the spring. Like I was like, whoa, I had no idea it's that much. Now, we can't just cut the hole and mount this in here. Nope, it's not that easy. There's a little more to it. So stick with me. But we are wrapping up. So I am going to, so I'm right in the middle of the, right in the middle of the X, making my mark all the way around. Because that's on an angle. And this spring is on an angle. Everything's on an angle. So it's not enough to just put the jack bolt here. We have to have the jack shaft correctly aligned to the spring. So it's two things here. And you know, both of them, I don't think I really got right like I needed to in the crush. Like I said, I know I was close, but not close enough. So plasma torch. All right, let's get this joker cut out here. Let's see what we can do. And the reason the slag had to go is because I'm putting the flange on the bottom. That way that the pressure of the spring is riding the flange against this plate right here instead of just depending on a weld where you weld it on the top. All right, now, this is not the jack I'm gonna use, but it's a good long jack. You could use a long piece of one inch threaded rod or three quarters, just whatever you got. But I'm doing this for a reason. Let me get all my stuff ready to go here. I keep back up here. All right. Now, grab the old well in the room. Get the numbers back where they need to be. Get that on there. You're too hot right now. Yep. Oh, right there. Okay. So I got you ready. Now, so here's what we're doing. We're sliding this jack nut up through here like this right here. I'll turn the Alamite out. 
And if I was to mount this flat to this plate, this jack nut is over in the corner of this spring and that is not where we want it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get right up underneath here. Turn the, turn the grease fitting where I can get to it. Yep, right, right through there so I can get to the grease fitting. I'm putting the bolt right in the middle of the pocket. Optimal location, y'all. I'm just eyeballing that because it's pretty easy to tell where the middle of the pocket is. But I'll check it here after I spot it in. All right. Okay. Now, I got you spotted on there pretty good. So my jack bolt is right through the center with this thing loaded. I got three spots. That's enough to hold it. Burn it in. All right. That's it. That's it, y'all. Well, I said quick and easy, and that's what I meant because that joker is in there and done. And my confidence level in this being right to have the spring rate be correct down in the load where it actually matters is through the roof. Everything about this metric build we're doing is 10 times better than how we did the crush. I am super excited about the direction this car is taking and how the build is going. Next episode coming up, we're putting these upper control arm mounts in that Jamie Lewis sent us. We're gonna walk through the camber curves. We're gonna talk about roll center of the way that we looked at it when we did the crush versus camber curves and the importance of understanding them for what really matters on the track. My thought process has changed on this and I think I've got a better way to understand it and I want us to go through that together next episode coming out hopefully this Sunday. See you then.